Well, here I am, and I'm back with another BIOS update. This is going to be for my 11th gen build right here, and this has been still a great system. I don't use it nearly as much anymore, but this is an 11900K paired with an Asus Strix Z970E Wi-Fi gaming motherboard, and it's still a great machine. However, it needs a BIOS update, so I figured uh, I'm about two versions behind, so I figured I'd walk you through it step by step again like I always have in my BIOS updates. And a lot of people seem to really like those step by step, really take your time, show you exactly how to get through it all. So if you stick around, I'm going to show you exactly how to get this done. So there are many ways going about updating your BIOS. Some people swear about using the, for instance, the Asus uh, utility software that you can find on their website, and that will do a check for you if you want and download the BIOS and restart the computer all by itself. Um, it's nice if it works. I don't trust software like that, so I go and I do it manually. The other way you can do it is actually um, going to the site, downloading the new BIOS, then using the renamer tool that ASUS uh, uses. Gigabyte, I think, does some of the same things, or you can rename it yourself. What it'll do is it'll tell you what to name the BIOS file. You have to rename it. And then what you do is you put it on this thumb drive, that file and that file alone, stick it in the back of the, your uh, computer here, or your, your motherboard, if your motherboard supports BIOS flashback. You can look in your user's manual or look right on the back of the board. Sometimes they're, they even have a USB um, header right in, right on the motherboard itself. So you take your side panel off and you go right in there and you stick this right on. Then you hit a little button. Sometimes it's on the motherboard. Sometimes it's on the back of the motherboard here. And you just hit BIOS flashback, let it do its thing. You don't even need a CPU, RAM, or storage which is kind of cool. And I do have a video uh, showing how to do this on a Gigabyte motherboard a little while ago, but you can go and check that out. Pretty much the steps are the exact same for any motherboard. It just depends on how long it takes. Then you have lights that flash. You have to pay attention to how it works. Read your, read your manual. That's what I suggest. So the way I enjoy and like to do it is the old fashioned way. Get it from the manufacturer, download it onto here, put the file on here, or download it to the computer, then put the file on the thumb drive, put it in the back of the computer, go into the BIOS, and update it that way. That's the way I'm going to show you. So we're going to get started on this. I'm going to show you uh, the other thing that you need to do is format this into FAT32. And you should have a thumb drive that is 16 gigabytes or smaller. There's a couple reasons for these. I'm not going to go into extreme detail, but I've had a lot of people questioning this or they're asking me, I, they need help and they can't figure out what's going on. A lot of times it's because they have a thumb drive that was too large or it wasn't formatted in a FAT32. And some of the older systems don't recognize anything other than FAT32. So do yourself a favor and um, uh, format this in a FAT32 and make sure it's 16 gigabytes or smaller. I know I keep repeating myself, but I've had a ton of questions on every BIOS update, they get stuck, they don't know how to do it, They're, it's, you know, something's wrong, and a lot of times it is because of those two reasons. So, uh, the other reason too is sometimes they try a different USB port and it works perfectly fine. That's the, another good solution. So, anyway, I'm going to show you how to uh, format this and then get it ready to accept that file so you can get started on updating your BIOS and stay right there. All right, so now that you have your computer that you want to update up and running, go ahead and take your thumb drive that you either just purchased or you had laying around, 16 gigabytes or smaller, you could go all the way down to 
one or two gigabyte stick if you still had one. Uh, go ahead and put this in the computer. I will put it in the back here. It doesn't matter if it's a 2.0 spot or a 3.0 spot. And then we are going to see now I still had a um, an old one on here from this that was a while ago. So what we're going to do is, well, it doesn't even matter that I delete that, but I'm going to delete it anyway. So the USB drive that we just put in there, we come down to it, see how it says I named it BIOS update. That's just what I named it. So don't get confused on that. Yours is going to say something different, probably new volume or something like that. Uh, so anyway, what we're going to do is a right click on it or what you can do right here. You can go to this PC so you can see it right there. Do a right click on it and we can go right up here to where it says format. Click on format and right here it says FAT32. That's what you need to put it in there. It may be able to read EX FAT, but FAT32 is your best bet. Do a quick format. That's checked right there, that box. And then just click start. And it's just warning you that all the data on this is going to be deleted, erased. So if you had something on there that's important, make sure you get it off first. I always dedicate a thumb drive just to BIOSes because I know I'm going to format it or delete everything off of it every time. So we can go ahead and wait for this. Shouldn't take too long. It is done. Okay. The format's complete. So now we're formatted in a FAT32. You can see that it says 14.4 gigabytes. It's actually a 16 uh, gigabyte thumb drive. All right, so now I'm gonna show you exactly how to check your current version of your BIOS. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go down here to the search bar. This is Windows 10, but this works the same as for Windows 11. Just type in the word R-U-N, run. Hit enter. Now down here, you're gonna type out what I have already typed out. Uh, I have so many computers that I'm, I'm doing this occasionally because I can't remember what version is currently uh, on my motherboard. So uh, type in msinfo32 and then click OK. You're gonna have uh, something very, very similar to this pop-up. Unless you have the same specs as me, it's not going to be the same. But um, this is what it's going to pretty much look like. It's going to have all this information. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll see this right here. It says BIOS version slash date. And you go over and you check it. And right there it says 1701, 12, 12, 2022. So 1701 is our current version of the BIOS in this machine. And you can go ahead and exit out of that. Okay, so after you have that information, now what you're gonna do is figure out what kind of a motherboard do you have. Now in the beginning, you heard me say that this is an Asus Strix Z590, and this is a E-Gaming motherboard. So whatever yours says, like for instance, this one uh, is like an Asus Z690, that's the chipset, the, the 690. Uh, uh, so yeah, Asus Z690 Maximus formula or maximum formula or something like that. Formula Maximus. I can't remember, but it's whatever your motherboard is. So figure that out. Then you need to go to the actual, um, website. So open up Google or Microsoft Edge or whatever your browser is. All right, uh, now, let's see. I just wanna get rid of this, not now. So go to your search bar. Now start typing in whatever your, uh, so we're gonna, we got Asus. This is a Z590. Now I did say Strix, but sometimes you don't really have to put that in. So right down here, I have E. It's gonna come up with the gaming one. Uh, let's see. Now, if we come right down here, you can see, uh, you can see right here, Rogue Strix Z590 E Gaming Wi-Fi Motherboard. This is going to bring us right to Asus.com. 
and it's going to bring us to the page that we actually want. Now, if you look up top here, this says products, innovation, downloads, community, support. This support page and all this stuff up here is for the actual whole website. We don't want that. We actually want the product. See, this is a picture of the motherboard that's in here. And right down here, you can see where it says support. Um, I know I have looks. I, I think that it might be showing two mouses right there. Uh, so I'm kind of recording in OBS. So sorry if it did show two, two, two Mises. Uh, so we want this support page right there. So we click on that. Uh, got stupid cookies. Um, all right, now we got drivers and utilities. That's where we need to go next. And you can see right down there, it says BIOS and firmware. Click on that. And we can see, we can show all the downloads. So you see right down here, look at what this says, 1701. That is our current BIOS. That's what I have in there. But since then, they came out with 1801 and 1903. Now, uh, for me, I know I can just download this, but I want to explain a couple of things. Usually, right under the BIOS, new BIOS version, or to the right of it, which would be this way for you guys, but usually to the right is descriptions. So you want to read, make sure you understand everything, because sometimes you have to, from the current BIOS, you have to go to a certain BIOS before you can go to the next BIOS. It's a little more rare uh, if you're keeping up with your BIOSes, but if you're way behind, like you've never updated your BIOS, and then all of a sudden you're, you want to jump to the latest, sometimes it won't let you uh, just because of, uh, it just doesn't have some stuff in the system that it needs to update to the, to the next uh, uh, version. Uh, I know that's kind of lame's terms, but uh, so anyway, so like the next version, it says improve system stability and compatibility. Now below that, it says before updating your BIOS, please download, download the ME, which is management engine, uh, update from ASUS support site and update management engine firmware to version blah, 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 to ensure optimize system settings. Now, when you see the word optimize, that just is going to be optimized. Don't worry. It's not a security thing. It's just it's so everything's optimized. But um, now I've updated a lot of my ME stuff. If you want to figure out how to do that, go ahead. I'm not going to show you how. It's a little involved. Um, but don't worry. The important thing is to update your BIOS, not so much that stuff, unless it says otherwise. So that one in particular just says improved system stability and compatibility. So the next one up, it says recommended for virtual update to mitigate the potential security vulnerabilities. Now this one's and pretty important as far as the BIOS. So we have some sort of some sort of a vulnerability within the old BIOSes that they found, and they don't want it to be exploited by hackers and stuff like that. So it's a good idea to update to this one. So once you find the BIOS that you can update to, or the latest, uh, we're gonna go ahead and down that. Now, if it says beta BIOS, don't do that. D just stick with the one below it. So if this 903 said beta, uh, anywhere in the description, I wouldn't be doing it. It just means it hasn't been proven enough to be fully released. Um, not really fully released, but it hasn't been proven to take the word beta off of it. So just go with that. So we're going to go ahead and hit download. Now, if you're doing Microsoft Edge, the download up is up here in the corner. It is already downloaded, so you can go ahead and exit out of there. We can come over to our, down here on the taskbar, we have our file explorer. We're going to open up, go to our downloads. I have a bunch of junk in here. Uh, so we're going to just going to select it all. Then we're going to unselect this one and uh, get that stuff out of there. So it's a little less confusing for you and me. So this is a zipped folder. What we want to do is extract. So you can either come up to the top there, or what I like to do, just quick, easy and dirty, is do a right click, hit extract all. And we're just going to extract it right to here. Now, I'm gonna 
just get rid of this other page. Now this is what it extracted. You have two things. Now you have a BIOS renamer. I'm not going to rename it. You can. All you have to do is open this up and it will change the one right next to it automatically, which is pretty cool. Um, but all we need is this file right here. So if you want to see it in a different view, um, let's go to details right there. That's how we normally see them. Uh, it's sometimes a little easier for me because usually the BIOS is the largest file. So if you look over here where it says size, it says 126 kilobytes, and this is 32,000 kilobytes, that's a larger file. And that's the one we want. We don't need both. We don't need the top one. The top one is only if you're gonna use your thumb drive to stick in the back of the computer and update the BIOS. Like, let's say you bought a motherboard, an older motherboard and a newer CPU. Maybe that CPU or that motherboard doesn't support that CPU yet, but it would with a BIOS update. You'd have to have another computer, download your correct BIOS, use that renamer tool, put it on the thumb drive, only the file that it renamed, stick it in the back in the computer, hit update, and now you can pop in your new CPU without a problem. So um, let's do this. So, all right, so we wanna put this on, I'm gonna open up another just to make this a little simple. Well, actually, let's make this simple. So highlight this one, hit control C on your keyboard. That'll copy it. Then let's go to the computer again. See how we got our, our, um, our BIOS thumb drive. Hit control V. This is going to just take a second and it's going to, uh, paste it, copy it over to the, uh, to the thumb drive. Now it's on the thumb drive. So guess what? That's it. Now it's ready. And theoretically, you don't even have to remove that thumb drive. You can leave it right in that port and it should work. Now I said in the beginning, maybe you have to move to a different port because it's just not seeing it for some reason. Occasionally that happens. But now I am going to take you into the actual BIOS. There are a couple of ways you can get into the BIOS. And I've had some weird comments in the past like, I show a different way. I'll show it one way in one video and people will say, well, you took, that's the long way around. Then I'll show it a different way in another video and they'll say, well, you know, you could just go and do it the other way you just did in the other video. It's like, you can't please everybody, which is kind of funny to me sometimes. So yes, there are multiple ways you can get into the BIOS. The way I show you, if you don't know how to do it, well, then you're going to know how to do it because I just showed you. But yes, there are sometimes simpler ways, easier ways. Uh, sometimes I feel um, it, it can be tricky uh, in, in your timing to get into the BIOS. If you, use the, if you just restart the computer and you have to um, hit the delete key repeatedly, or you have to pretty much just spam it until it gets into the BIOS. Now there's a certain time where I start spamming it. Uh, that's, that's the traditional way. Um, there's another way that I will show you. Oh, this computer actually needs some updates, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. So what we're going to do, actually right down here. Right down here in the search bar, we're going to type in trouble, troubleshooting settings. That's perfectly fine. This works uh, for Windows 11 also. And right here... We're going to go under recovery. Uh, you could type in actually recovery instead of troubleshooter, but sometimes I feel it's easier just to find it this way. So, so anyway, uh, Windows 11 is under the same thing. So we got advanced startup. That's what you need for Windows 10, Windows 11. Hit the restart now. Now, again, I may have to rescale all this. So just bear with me for a moment while this computer is actually going to the advanced startup. What it does is it restarts a computer, then it goes to a another screen where you can select different options. So here we go right here. I actually, I need to make sure that it is, looks like it's viewing the correct way, which is pretty impressive, which I like. So we're gonna go to 
So you have a couple different options there. You can continue into Windows 10, but we want to troubleshoot. Now we're gonna go into advanced options. And you can hear, here we have six different choices. So the one that we want to get into the BIOS automatically is the UEFI firmware settings. So go ahead and click on that. And then you're gonna have another little uh, thing where it just says restart the computer. Yes, we wanna restart it. So go ahead and click on that. Now your computer is gonna restart. It is going to um, uh, go right into the BIOS, which is exactly what we want it to do. And there we go, presto. Um, you can either use the, your keyboard or your uh, left and right, up and down arrows on your keyboard to navigate through the BIOS, or you can just use the uh, cursor here. So right down here, I'm sorry, not down there. We're not in easy mode. <laughs> so another way you can check your BIOS version is if you go to easy mode and uh, where is it? There it is. Okay, up at the top left, you see the road Strix right here. 1701 is our current version. I just wanted to uh, show you how to do that. Then we're gonna go back to advanced mode F7 or down at the bottom right there. We're gonna to go to our tools tab. You can either hit your right arrow all the way over and press enter, or you can just use the mouse. So now we have easy flash utility, easy flash three utility. That's what we want. If we can go ahead and click on that. And here we go. So it sees right here, this is exactly what we want. It is, um, you can tell by the size, the 14778 megabyte, but that's 14.7 gigabytes. That is the uh, storage drive that, or thumb drive that we're using. You can see right here, it has our file on it. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, please back up a BitLocker recovery key and suspend BitLocker encryption in the operating system. This is if you set a BitLocker, you wanna go ahead and disable this. Uh, so this can all take place and you don't have any issues getting back in. Um, so anyway, we're just going to click yes. This is how simple this is. Do you want to read this file? Yeah, we want to read it. Now, it's usually smart enough it's the, if it's the wrong file, it's not going to let you install it. The old motherboards would let you install it and you'd have a corrupt BIOS and you'd have a bricked motherboard. So you'd either have to uh, send it out or if you knew how to do that repair. Um, so do you really want to update the BIOS? So we're going right to version 1903. Yes, we do. Now down at the bottom, you can see a progress bar and that's going to kind of uh, determine how long it's going to take. It's not in seconds or in minutes. It's kind of just a bar that you have to watch. At this point, don't make any more clicks, don't exit out, don't shut your computer off. And if you have a battery backup like I do, it's best to plug it into that so you don't potentially run into bricking your motherboard. So if you have a power outage or if you trip over the cord um, and you unplug it by mistake, uh, those are all scenarios. So just leave it alone, walk away come back or just stare at it, but don't, you don't have to touch anything. Just let it be. And uh, I'll let you guys just watch this progress bar, but I'm gonna speed it up. All right, well, it looks like we're approaching right there at the end. Um, yep, there we go. So updated successfully. Now the system's gonna reset on its own. I didn't even click anything. Uh, that is very normal, uh, mainly for ASUS motherboards. Again, from manufacturer to manufacturer, uh, it can vary just a little bit. I remember with um, Gigabyte, I had a black screen and it was like a black screen forever. It's like the computer just shut off and it was done. I'm like, okay, and 10 minutes later, I just restarted the computer and it was perfectly fine. Um, I don't know why it did that, but sometimes you get little hiccups like that. Um, now with MSI, they tend to, when you hit the update button, or if you want to read it, 
I, I forget what it is. Yeah, I think you have to read it or something like that. And it actually restarts the computer so it can go into the update phase of it. So every, every machine is different. Uh, generally, they're close to the same, but just keep that in mind that it may not be exactly the same. Now, this is just going through some reboot processes to uh, take the full effect of updating everything and uh, making, every, making sure everything's okay. So I'm hoping to uh, see a screen here. Um, it actually says BIOS is updating uh, LED firmware. Do not shut down or reset the system to prevent system boot up failure. So I'm hoping that is recording for you so you can actually see that firsthand. Yeah, we're just we're just in a waiting process right now. Uh, that's that's it. If you would have gone away for a long time, you wouldn't have even seen that happen. It would have just got through it. And so it's, sometimes it's a good idea to see what these things do instead of going away. Just make sure you don't touch anything. So anyway, right here, uh, it's basically going to tell you to push F1. That's the fourth line down. It says press one, F1 to continue. So we're going to push F1, F1. Why is that not working? Okay, I've run into this problem before. It's basically, it's a communication between a wireless. Uh, oh, and we can actually, you can actually take this out now. You don't need that in there. But I don't know why it does this sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'll just switch it to a different, the dongle, to a different port. Yeah, see, it's not working. So, <sighs> there's really nothing I can do. Uh, other than getting another keyboard and trying that. So let me try that quick. All right, we just got a, I got an HP um, keyboard here. Yeah, I'm not sure why it does this. Um, there should be, let me just, you know, just for ha-has, let me go through and just try this. Because what if you don't have another keyboard and that's your only keyboard? It's kind of funny. Let's do control. So function F1, function F1, that worked. So there, now you don't need an extra keyboard. Again, if you had XMP enabled, re-enable that, uh, or DOCP uh, and so forth. So what I like to do is sometimes I would go, whoops, right to, I'm using the wrong mouse. I would go right to exit, if I can. And then I would go to load optimize defaults, just to ensure that they are all loaded. So everything's back to like original factory, except for the BIOS, the BIOS will stay updated. And just to prove it, we'll go back to easy mode. And if you look up there in the left-hand corner, it says 1903 now. And boom. We are up to date, guys. So, in order to get out of here, you can uh, you can do F10 or function F10, right? Uh, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want PTT. I thought it was function F10. All right. Well, forget that. See, save. It says F10. Did I hit F10? There we go. No, that's not it either. What is going on? Why isn't the F10 working? That's strange. All right, well. Oh, right, 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 right. I did hit the right key. So um, the save changes and reset. So PTT is going from enabled to disabled. So um, that's fine because all that has to do with is basically if this is Windows 11 ready. So if I disable that, it won't show me for Windows 11, which I'm perfectly fine with. I wasn't fully reading that. And see, you got to read. You got to pay attention. So now it's going to reset that particular thing. It's going to it shut itself down. It's going to reboot and it's just going to go back into Windows now. If it did have some updates, so it may be going to want to try and update some Windows stuff as it goes back into here. All right. Coming back into Windows now. 
Look at that. All right. Now, just to um, show you again. Wait a minute. I was using the wrong mouse. Oh, we're going to click on the run again. So then we can go to the MS32. I just wanted to show you here also. So if we come right down to here to BIOS version, see, it says 1903. And uh, it has a newer date instead of 12, 12, 22, 8, 30, 23. I am doing this uh, on uh, mid-September right now. So, uh, so you can just realize you know, I'm about a month behind this update. Well, as I wrap this video up, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon next to the subscription button to get notified for any future videos that I do post. And if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up to show your support and uh, encourage me to make more videos like this. I actually do like making the BIOS videos. It seems like I've helped quite a few people uh, over the course of the last couple of years just in the BIOS updates. It's uh, pretty... Um, phenomenal uh, and uh, encouraging uh, to see some some of the people's words and comments. So uh, other than that, uh, feel free to share this video with your family and friends. And until next time, guys, take care. <laughs>